One of the most colorful characters in the Bible for me is the Apostle Peter. Uh, I love the call of God upon his life. He and his brother Andrew, James and John were all fishing associates. They're on the Sea of Galilee and uh, evidently they had, they were simply following in on their father's businesses. They had formed a consortium, they fished together. In those days, Rome kind of would uh, allow certain fishermen to fish certain spots, uh, providing they brought their fish to the market and Rome always got a part. And so you had to have success to have permission from Rome to be able to operate in the waters there in Galilee. So evidently this had been a long established relationship with uh, Peter and Andrew and James and John and their fathers. Uh, there's two accounts in scripture that I want to refer to. And both of them involve when Christ multiplied the success of their life and, and they caught an enormous amount of fish. And so the first one is at the call, God's call upon Peter's life in Luke chapter five. And on that day, he says that they were mending or washing their nets. They had already been up all night long. They, they had to fish all night. And, and why they fished at night was because they didn't have ice and in the early mornings they'd have to bring their fish to market. So they had fished through the night. Basically, they worked the graveyard shift. It was a miserable life from this context. They slept during the day. They uh, would wake up in the evening. They would go to go fishing at night. And so there was just a vicious routine of life just to be able to make life work. And so their, their boats are docked. They're standing there. They're they're cleaning out their nets and Jesus comes to Simon Peter and he says, uh, why don't you take me out into the water? And uh, so Simon Peter's tired, but because it's the Lord, he, he takes him out into the water. And uh, while he's out there, he, he says to Peter, he says, why don't you cast out your net on the right side of the boat? And he said, and you will catch fish. And Peter says, you know what, master? He said, we have fished all night and we have caught nothing. But nevertheless, at your word. I, I love that concept. It is the obedience factor. If you want to find blessing in your life, then obey the command. It's not a suggestion. See, Jesus knows what's best for your life. Even in uncertain times, even when you have going through a failure moment, Christ understands where you're at. And there's times that God will ask you to do something where you're exhausted, when life seems like, boy, that's been an empty moment, an empty season. And he says, nevertheless, at your word. And so he cast his net out on the right side of the boat. And the Bible says his net was filled with so many fish that he had to call to shore to James and John. He said, bring the other boat. And he says, and their, their boats were filled with fishes to the point that they almost began to sink. And then it says this, and their nets broke. See, sometimes God brings you to a revelation moment, a revelation moment and an encounter with his presence that is so powerful that it breaks the hold that the old life has on you. And so it was a wonderful day. I mean, here was the most successful day that they had ever had fishing. And they, they caught fish right off the bank, just not far from the shore. And what a wonderful day. I'm sure when they got to market and uh, the people saw how many fish that they had, two boatloads of fish doesn't give us an amount. It just says their boats started to sink. And so I'm sure when they got to market, there was a question. And I'm sure the question was this. Where did you find? What's your secret fishing spot? We want to know where we can go that we can end up with results like that. And see, what I love about God is this. It's not a where, it's a who. And so what God does in his economy, he answers the questions we ask in life with a greater question. So I'm sure the question that Remember when Job asked God, he said, God, where are you? I can't find you. Where are you in my situation? God doesn't answer the question that he asked, but he asked Job a greater question. He says, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? 
Where were you when I hung the stars in space and the morning stars shouted for joy and they danced in laughter? Where were you, Job, when I put all these things together and how do you, how do you understand me and how do you question me when, you know what, I have, I've been there from your beginning. From the moment that you have never known, he said, you have always been on my heart and in my mind. And, and so I love Elijah when Elijah's in the cave and he's going through that pity moment and he asks God, why don't you let me die? And God asks him another question. He says, listen, why don't you get up and go anoint some other people? Anoint someone to take your place. Anoint the next king over Israel. Don't just sit in this cave and have a pity party. So the question is not the where, but the answer. And the question is the who. I don't know what you're going through in life. You've got some questions. God, how am I going to make it? How am I going to get through this season? And what God says is, listen, why don't you get up and be the church? Where are you? Where, where are you in this moment of time when, when people are struggling? So the question is not the God, where am I at? Or where are you at in this moment? God, but God asks us, what did I call you to do? What's the purpose that I have for your life that you need to get back to? So it's a beautiful moment. And what I see in God's economy is God has powerful revelation moments when he wants to break us from the old life. He broke their nets. And so there's times for us that God will do something mighty in your life. There will be this emphatic emphasis moment where, where God has just put the exclamation point of his blessing on your life. And it's that blessing of God that draws your attention to the fact that I was created for a higher purpose than this. What I love after he filled both boats with fishes to the point that they started to sink, uh, he asked them a question. He said, why don't you come and follow me? He said, I'll make you become fishers of men. What a beautiful moment. As they realized that God, had, listen, God knows where you're at. He knows what you're going through. And here's what he's done. He said, I came to give you a better life than the one you inherited from your fathers. He says, you can either be about, James and John, you can be about your father's business. Peter and Andrew, you can be about your father's business. Or listen, come with me and we can be about God's business. And I love the fact they left their boats, they left their nets, and they followed Jesus. Let's fast forward three and a half years. There had been beautiful ministry. They had accomplished a lot of things. And so it came to the point of the crucifixion. And y'all know Peter's bold response to God says, you know what? Jesus, I'll, I'll never leave you. I'll be there for you. I'll fight for you. I'm willing to die for you. And uh, then there was that dismal failure. And we've all had those failure moments. Even though Jesus came to Peter later and, and uh, he revealed himself to him. And, and Peter had to struggle. He had to struggle with a couple things. One is, is knowing that I failed the master. Knowing that everything that I promised him that I would do that uh, I didn't do it. I think we've all had some big failure moments in life. Moments where we said, God, you can count on me. And then we didn't, we didn't match up. And I think maybe the biggest was not just recognizing his failure, but it was the frustration. The frustration, even after knowing Jesus had, had risen from the grave and, and something changed. Even in those 40 days when Jesus showed himself alive with many infallible proofs, he didn't go to the disciples. He said, come on, guys, I want you to follow me. He left them. In other words, he was trying to teach them something. You've got to learn to be led of the Holy Spirit. So, he, so in their confusion of not knowing what to do, you can imagine that uh, there's been this huge moment in your life. There's been this transition time when things that were normal in your relationship with God all of a sudden everything has changed and uh, so you have to make that you have to make that decision what am I going to do next and uh, there's this then we have this account in John chapter 21 where it says that Peter and James and John and Thomas and Nathaniel and it probably would be Matthew. He said there was two others. Uh, 
Peter said, I'm going to go fishing. That was not, what Peter was suggesting was not, guys, let's have a weekend fishing trip. See, here was a group of disciples that were lost. They didn't know what to do next. And so Peter says, I'm going fishing. What he's saying is, guys, why don't we join together? We will start a fishing business, and this is what we're going to do. Most of us live here in Capernaum. He says, this, is, this just makes sense. And so he goes back. He gets his boats. He, mends, he has to mend his nets. Now, listen, I think any time that we return to the old life, we're trying to patch holes in the broken life that God called us out of. And so they mend their nets. They're out there fishing. Jesus is not in the boat. But here's what I love. Jesus knows where they're at. Can I tell you that Jesus knows where you're at? In those frustrating moments in life when you're tempted to go back to the old life, when you start trying to patch holes in what used to be because you don't know where to go next, can I tell you that God knows where you're at? He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're looking for. And then he, he shows up and they're, they're out there fishing. And he shows up and he asks this question. He says, have you caught any fish? I, I believe paraphrased it would go better like this. Is how's this working out for you guys? You've returned back to your old life. You've returned back to fishing, but, but what's your success? And uh, they answer back and Peter answers back and says, we've caught nothing. And then once again, Jesus says this. He says, I want you to cast your net on the other side and you will find fish. So they cast their net on the other side, even though they'd fished all night, no success. The Bible says they caught 153 large fish. It, they were so large, listen, it did not break the net, but it took both boats to bring it to shore. Peter recognizing, John says, look, it's Christ. Peter casts himself into the water and he swims to shore. And there on the shore, Jesus has bread and fish already cooked, already waiting for them. He's ready to serve them breakfast. And in that moment, it had to be a moment of humility when Peter recognizes, you know what, this old life is nothing. But I want you to notice there was a transition before Jesus said, I'm gonna make you fishers of men. Now he says, Peter, I want you to feed my sheep. The call that he's calling him back to is even a greater call than the call that he called him to before. But here's the, here's the issue. The first time Jesus broke his nets, the first time he kind of gave them a reason to leave their old life. But this time, the nets don't break. This time, he leaves it up to the disciples you have got to decide if you're going to leave the nets. You have got to decide if you're going to get back to the life God called you to. Now, here's what I want you to understand. There's many of you watching right now that God has called you to a higher purpose and a higher life. And you got to get, it's your choice. There'll never be success when you go back to the empty old life. It may feel familiar. It may give you a source of, uh, of, temporary peace just to know I have something else to rely on besides God but I promise you it'll always end up with an empty hall so God is asking you the question how's this working out for you and he's leaving up to you are you going to break the nets are you going to leave the nets this time I'm not going to break it it's up to you now to leave it but I'm calling you back to your purpose if you love me feed my sheep I want to pray for you today. I want to pray that God's blessing will surround you. I pray that God brings back to your remembrance the things that he has done for you in the past, that he just surrounds you with his presence. He surrounds you with his grace. He covers you in his love. And you understand, God, you called me to a higher purpose. And I want you to get back in the game. I want you to get back in the fight. I want you to get back in the race because God loves you. He's called you to a higher life than any other life. There will be no success. Success without Christ. Success is found in our obedience to him. Let's pray. Father, I love you. And I thank you, God, for everyone who's listening to me today. 
I pray, God, your peace and your power. For those going through a tough situation, and right now it's been an empty hall. They're, they're going through all the emotions, but God is just like, nothing's working. I want them to be reminded, Father, that it's not aware. Some of them are going from place to place looking for success, but success is not found in their where. Success is found in the who, and you are the who. And I pray, God, that you're going to minister to them powerfully, that you'll put your arms of love around them. You'll surround them, God, with your presence. They will know. There will be that revelation moment in their heart and their spirit. There will be the peace of the Holy Spirit as you're teaching the, them to walk according to the Holy Spirit. And I pray, God, that in this season, they're going to encounter and experience your power in the most amazing way. I pray blessing over them, open doors for them that no man can shut. Shut every door of distraction the enemy would try to place in front of them to, as an exit ramp from your will. And I pray, God, the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit will keep them as they obey you and follow your commandment. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We love you. Go in God's grace.